I've had jobs that I didn't like. I've had jobs where I would stare at the clock and just pray that the day was over. And then I prayed for God to give me a career path that I was passionate about, a job that I loved and loved me, a perfect employment that could only be created by God. Well, I thank God many times because I have that employ employment now. And maybe you desire that kind of work life. You should. In Ecclesiastes 3.13, it says that everyone may eat and drink. That means may everyone eat and drink. May you have all of the abundance of life that you want. May you never want or have lack in your life, and it continues, and have satisfaction in their toil. That is, that sure you're going to work hard, but may you have satisfaction and happiness as you work hard. And then it ends up with this statement, this is the gift of God. I remember hearing a story from a gentleman that told me this in person, one of the most successful real estate agents in Houston, Texas, and he succeeded where others have failed. Now he's listing and selling more homes than most. Here are his words that he told me. He said, in 1999, I was managing a wonderful, invigorating team of salespeople who relied on me for encouragement and support. We were very successful that year. We achieved sales levels unexpected by the vice president who felt threatened by me, his rookie manager and rookie sales team surpassing sales numbers of two more senior and expert sales managers. I began to feel pressure from above and criticism for a job that I thought was well done. At the same time, my workload kept me away from home and my child who needed more time with me because I found that I needed to give more time to my work. I would leave before the sun rose and come home in the dark after the sun set. How could a situation that was supposed to be so fulfilling and so wonderfully satisfying become so painful and empty and confusing? robbing me of the life that I wanted to live. I did something that I never did before. He said, I knelt down in prayer and turned the whole situation over to God. It was hard, he said. It was humbling. It was scary. What if God didn't answer my prayer? What if I was meant to stay in the current job that I was beginning to hate and was causing suffering in my family. I prayed to God to use whatever signal God needed to get the message across to me and where I should work and where I should be for my child. And let me tell you about my child. I was a single parent at the time raising my daughter alone. She needed me more of me. God didn't answer. For the first time in my life, I wondered what to do, and then I knelt down in prayer again, and I released at a deeper level than I had before, and a great energy and courage infilled me. For the first time in my life, I did something that, that I could could not see the end of, but I knew that God would produce miracles. I walked into my boss's office at the time, and I resigned. You should have seen the look on his face. I realized in prayer that God's answer would provide 
a wonderful employment that would be the right yoke around my neck instead of this heavy yoke that I was carrying. Well, that was over a decade ago, he said. And through God's grace and mercy, and a slight bonk to my head in 1999, God infused me with the spiritual courage that I needed to take a true leap of faith into God's arms and love. Today, he says, I always share with every customer, keep the faith, because in face of insurmountable odds and adversity, only God can direct us to solutions that we need. And God is truly waiting to help. We only need to ask and release. A lady writes, In the year 2000, I had been divorced for five years. I was raising three teenagers. And my child support for doing that was $600 a month. I had worked for IBM for many years. By 1999, I was earning $45 an hour as a project manager. I was laid off in January of 2000, and I found no work until July of that year with WorldCom. And what happened there? WorldCom started to fall apart in August of 2000, and I was laid off again. I had no other work until March of 2001 when I ba went back to work for the state. When I got my last unemployment payment, Texas only pays 26 weeks of unemployment no matter what, I had only $600 a month to live on. I must have gone on 30 interviews for a job at that time, but no job. And looking back, I smile. Even though it was a time of great adversity, every job that I applied for, they had layoffs or they went under. I prayed to God during this time, and I realized that only God knew the direction that I should take, the blessed direction for my life and my three children. As I look back now, I smile, because what a time that was of opening myself up spiritually. Now, let me tell you the story. God protected and provided for me in miraculous ways. As I look back now, it was a miracle. All three children have graduated from college. They're intelligent. They're caring young adults. I remarried a wonderful man who makes me laugh. You might ask how I got through it all. I can only say that I believed in God at a deeper level. I took one day at a time, and I knew as I was taking those days, one at a time, that I was never alone, and that God would provide for any of my needs. Faith works. It worked for me. When I have worked with people about getting a new job, I always ask this question, my friends. Now, I said, how many jobs do you need? Well, the answer, of course, is, well, just one. It's fun to see the look of understanding and hope that come across their face. They'll often tell me why well, I've applied for 30 jobs or I've uh, applied for this many across the country. I say, how many do you need? Just one. Spiritual people are always seeking what is called in the Bible the promised land. Do you know something? God does not promise you a piece of real estate property. If God did, how many acres would it be? Would it be one or 60 or 120? How big would this piece of property be? God does not promise you a piece of land. What did God promise? 
God promises a piece of property. In awareness, a dwelling place in your mind that is the promised land. A place where you will dwell and absolutely know fulfillment and happiness and well-being and all the things that you have desired in your life but have not been able to put into words. That is the place where you'll find the words and the feelings that you've searched for during your whole lifetime. You'll be able to know and truly trust God as your provider. King Solomon was a person in the Old Testament who sought to find fulfillment in his life. In Ecclesiastes 2, verse 3, he says, I wanted to see what was worthwhile for men to do under heaven during the few days of their lives. He was trying to find meaning for his life, and he was a king. And I am trying to find meaning for my life, and you're trying to find meaning for your life. Well, because he was a king, he could do anything that he wanted. He was able to spend his riches on building great things. He was able to devote himself to fine music and literature, to pursue knowledge. He could buy anything that his eye saw. But here's what it says in Ecclesiastes 2, verse 10. I denied myself nothing my eyes desired. I refused my heart no pleasure. We may think, well, gee, if I could only find a job that could give me that kind of freedom, if only I could go out and buy that new house, if only I could take that trip that I desire so much, then, then I would be happy. But after he does it all, after he buys everything, here's what King Solomon said. He said, everything is meaningless. Ecclesiastes 1, verse 2. Solomon also reached a similar conclusion. In the end, he discovered the only life worth living was a life that was spent loving God and doing God's will. Are we doing God's will every moment of our lives or just during a little bit of our lives, like Sunday morning? Are we still away from that place that is called the promised land. When we go to work, do we find there the kingdom of heaven? Do we find joy in our work that spiritually charges us up? Do we have a passion for what, we do, what we're doing that is so incredibly great that we wouldn't be doing anything else. <laughs> At five o'clock in the afternoon, you would pray, Oh dear God, I'm having so much fun. Please give me one more hour. I'm having such a good time, God. Don't send me home now. And God, if you could bring more people into my life like my boss, I'd love it. If not, why not? Do we have to change careers? Do we have to find a new boss? Maybe we do. But also, whether we go or stay, in the end, we need to change ourselves and our perception. In the end, we have to move to a new state of consciousness in our mind that is the promised land. Perhaps, we do need to dwell in a different land of consciousness, in a different promised land, in a different kingdom of heaven. When we are competent and content in simple and sacred work, we are preparing for our God mission. Spirit's work 
is too important to be entrusted to someone who will not carry it through. Sometimes we have the feeling that we're destined for some special work, but we don't know what it is yet. We search, and wander, and we wonder what will this be. Undoubtedly, there are people who die still searching and wondering what might have been. Most likely, there was something simple in their life to do before their life's work was given to them, but many people look for the grand mission and will not embark upon the mission until the grand mission is revealed, and they miss the simple work that is at hand in the human work environment. No one is hired as the president of a company out of college or business school. The graduate must pay his or her dues before the opportunity for leadership is granted. In the kingdom of God, soul development is required. It is the prerequisite before a God mission is given. The bottom line of this is saying to find something to do and to do it well. Do the task that is at hand, not alone, but with God's help, and God will provide. I absolutely love serving this ministry. It is my duty as a child of God to do the big things, but also the little things too. I have to enjoy taking out the trash and sharpening the pencils and doing the little things daily, as well as the big ones. This is determined not by my job, but by me. For me to find the promised land in every task that I do. Do I enjoy taking out the trash? Do I enjoy sharpening the pencils? What land am I dwelling in in the moment? Do I go through, oh, gee, I can't stand this. I just, it's overwhelming to me. Why can't there be someone else do this? Well, that is like drinking poison. It is literally causing my whole system to be polluted. Dr. Wayne Dyer says, doing what you love is the cornerstone of having abundance in your life. Well, we have to create love for what we're doing in the moment. In Deuteronomy 4, verse 1, it says, Go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. This day, I'm going to ask you to believe in taking possession of what God gives you as a step leading to fulfillment of your heart's desires. In the Bible, it says that all, not some, all that your father has is yours, and you take possession of what belongs to you. This week, in your quiet times, you take possession of the kingdom of spiritual consciousness, of a land, of a consciousness inside of you that will spiritually change your life. If you dwell in the spiritual kingdom, you will literally sharpen every pencil with a bliss inside of you that is unsurpassed. There is a spiritual experience in sharpening a pencil if you're in the right place in spirituality on your job. Harvey McKay said, find something you love to do and you'll never have to work a day in your life. And that is so true. It is to find that that you are meant to do, guided by God to doing it. Dictionary is the only place that you will find success comes before work. Hard work is the price we must pay for success. 
Vince Lombardi said, if you think you can accomplish anything, you're willing to pay the price. But when you're on a job that you love, you do not shy away from hard work. You run towards it because you love doing it so much. See, your land of Canaan is the promised land, and it is found on the path of bliss inside of you. Use whatever you have at hand as a basis of multiplication. If you're doing little tasks, bless those tasks. Enjoy and become God-centered in those tasks, and pretty soon it will multiply. And how does it multiply? It multiplies through your awareness with God being with you every moment on your job. It radiates out from you to fellow workers and to customers. And it will also be in your physical pocket. It is called supply. It is called provision from your provider. There is a basis for multiplication in the smallest tasks you do. If you do it all to the glory of God, it is accumulative. It grows in interest. Use what you have and what you do. Do it to the glory of God. So many of us are looking, waiting, wanting, putting off until doing something great for the glory of God because we think that the task that we have today is not big enough. But I tell you, it is because in that moment, God gave you that task to do. Enjoy it. Savor it as a child of God. If you sharpen your pencil, do your task and say, I am happy doing this. I am contented doing this. And you'll find that it changes your whole consciousness. Instead of you repelling your good, you will become a magnet for more good and increase in your life. If you have settled for a sense of, of lack in your life, I ask you to settle for something bigger than that. To begin to practice this is mine consciousness. To know that you are a child of God and all that God has in the kingdom is yours, but you must claim it. You must believe that it is yours. Things that have no owner are soon lost. And your land of Canaan is the promised land, so go in and possess it spiritually. You have to become the owner of spiritual consciousness. You have to dwell in it. You have to have a smile on the inside of your awareness that will radiate out from center to circumference of you. Your land of Canaan is your promised land. It is for you to go in and take possession. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Every good thing that you have sought from day one is like an accumulating investment that is behind a dam waiting to flood into your life. And the dam is simply your perception at the moment. We spend almost every waking moment of our lives at work. Therefore, make that into your kingdom of heaven. Make that into your land of Canaan. And then people will begin to sense something in you that is different. They'll be drawn to you. They won't even know why, but they'll sense that there is a power that you have in you. And the truth is, you do. You take possession of a God consciousness in the moment. And you also take possession of the results. This is a huge thing. So many people, they get results and they say, no, 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 no. It's too good for me. 
They either say it verbally or in consciousness, but it is the same. It radiates out from you. You are going to feel different on your job because you're going to have a healing both in the workplace and with your co-workers and in your physical body temple in your energy. You're not going to go to work with a great sickness in your body caused by resistance to the daily mundane task at hand. You're going to work with great zeal and you're going to take possession of your work. You're going to take possession of your life and you're going to realize that your job or employer is not your provider. It is just the effect of your real provider. God is moving you to a new stage of employment. Now, if you have to seek a different place of employment, don't burn bridges behind you. Love your way out into new avenues of expression. It is true that many of us give our life and our creative essence over to the menial job at hand, and we resent it. And we hand our power over on a silver platter, and we think of ourselves as a slave. But who made us a slave? We are the ones that make ourselves a slave. If we want to seek a higher level of life, we must take possession and become that higher level of life. We relate ourselves to God as our source and our provider. Our employment is not our source of good. Our source is from God. And in that moment, we take possession of the powerful land that we seek to dwell in. And in that moment, we find a new freedom of expression spiritually. Unless one conceives of himself or herself as possessing good things, they will not possess them. In John 10, verse 30, Jesus Christ said, I and the Father are one. On your job, you and God are one. You belong to a union. You are a union worker. You belong to the union of life, the union of truth, the union of love. Now this union is an everlasting union. It is a common union, a communion of God and you and humankind. This union will never go on strike. How could we strike against God when God never strikes against us. You are a member in good standing with a permanent security. You may want to know how do you pay your union dues. Well, you pay your union dues through prayer and through meditation. In that moment that you're sharpening the pencil, you say, God, here I am. I'm going to do great work through you. And you know that this is the truth of God. And you carry a paid up union card at all times. A paid up card of Christ in your heart. It is a life membership that will sustain you ever after. Wherever you go, this card will be recognized. It will be honored. It doesn't matter which employer you go to, they can see something in your eyes. There is an attracting charisma in your presence, and they know that there is something special about you. Now, they may not even be religious, but this bypasses the walls of the church. There is a feeling that they're going to get from you when they're with you. They may not 
be able to tell what that is, but they'll feel special because there is a specialness that is coming through you as you. They're going to feel God working through you, and it is going to be glorious. Now, you're not going to fear layoffs because you know you work for God, and God is your source. God always works for you, and God works in you with what you're doing in the moment. Now, what you're doing may change over time. It may be a different city, because, my friend, we're on a soul journey, and there is a hidden curriculum of our lives. And that's not our career path. It is our spiritual development. There is always work in this common union to bless and to heal and to help our fellow workers. This is your real task. No matter whether you're taking out the trash, sharpening pencils, or speaking to great people like I am right now, you're glad that you're in this union with God. You consider it a privilege that God would use you to talk through you, to come through you. Emerson said, There is one mind common to all individual people. Well, Emerson is talking about the mind of God. When you are seeking new employment, realize the person interviewing you and you as the interviewee are immersed in the same mind, the same love, and the same consciousness. And you become one with this person. You allow that spiritual presence to happen through you and through her or him. And you allow the right place of employment to come through that spiritual energy. Nothing can stop it from appearing in your experience this very day and every day of your life because God is continually setting before you the right place of service for you today at the exact right time doing exactly what you need to do. You have a talent that is going to work through you. It is a talent that is beyond human. It is a talent that is Christ working through you. So no matter what you're doing, that God energy is going to come forth if you're willing to get out of the way in your human willed consciousness. The kingdom comes to us and it comes to others around us as we allow this to happen. With God working through you, you realize that you have the power to bless and to heal and to go forth into your job seeking avenues of new powers of confidence. You realize because you're not alone. You're able to follow through on every lead and every call that comes in. You have the energy. You have the desire to serve and this desire is never too young, it's never too old, it's always in demand because it is the love of God coming through you. You realize that God has already provided. It has your name on it. And it can't go to another unless you refuse you realize that you have a tremendous power to go forward. And therefore, you take possession of that power. In Bill Moyer's book, A World of Ideas, he quotes a famous Russian book, A House of the Dead. The Russian says in this book, if you want to literally crush a man... Just give him a work that is completely senseless to him. Well, we've all had work like that. But we accepted that and we took possession of that senselessness. Life is either a tearing adventure or it is nothing. 
we need to make it a daring adventure in the outer and to make life a daring adventure inside of us, in our soul. We need to make life a daring adventure even in the common ordinary days. We need to produce a quality in our now time. We need to realize that we're successful and that God created us for success. And we're successful because we have taken possession of that God-given gift. God is the provider of success and God is the provider of satisfaction. And now, my friend, I would like you to close your eyes and have a prayer with me. Let us pray. Dear God, I am determined to give my best. I know that you are real and you're my real boss. And I know that I'm working for the richest, most trustworthy employer in the world. I am working for you, God. And God, I know that there is a complete circulation that you're working in me and through me. Nothing can work against us. Times, conditions, or seasons have nothing to do with what you want us to do. And I know, dear God, that you are always saying yes to me as I say yes to you. I do not listen to the frustrating opinions of others or of my own lower human mind. I am seeking today to serve you in a new and a higher way. Dear God, I know that you will work through me. I know that there is never any delay in your work for me. I know that the law of compensation is working and it will work right now, tomorrow, and far into my future. And it is very good. I know that my God-given ability and experience is always in demand because you're always in demand. And as I give myself over to you and you come through me, we together as one create an ability that never grows old, never wears out, never gets tired. It is always appreciated. I look to you, dear God, as my provider so that I can provide for my needs and my family. I am going to be about God's business. God's business and I are one. There is a progress, there is a resolve, and there is a fruitful compensation in my life. I accept my right place of employment. I take possession of it in joy and gratitude. It is exactly what I want, and it is exactly where I am needed. I am using the power that never fails. Dear God, I thank Thee for this blessed opportunity to serve in Thy business. I am grateful for this gainful employment. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen.